In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you a simplified method for making color prints that match what you see on your screen using an Epson printer and a Macintosh computer using um, the, latest, uh, the latest operating system, the Ventura operating system. This is actually a redo of a, of a tutorial that I did several years ago with an older Mac that had an older operating system. And the reason that I'm redoing it is because Apple has, in the more recent versions of the Mac operating system, changed the way that the printer drivers are the way the printer drivers work and the arrangement of the different controls in the printer drivers. Um, the actual settings I'm using haven't changed, but um, the locations of those settings and, and how to set them up in the driver have changed. So if you've looked at my older um, my older tutorial, you may find it difficult to find the stuff that you need. So that's why I'm redoing this. Now I've already got a picture here set up. Um, that we're going to use. Now what we're going to do here is what's called printer managed color. Um, we're not going to be using ICC profiles or anything like that, so this is going to be much simpler. If you want to learn how to use ICC profiles, I do have a separate tutorial for that. I also have a separate tutorial for doing black and white printing. Um, this one's just going to be for color printing. Um, to use the printer color managed mode, um, first of all the picture needs to be um, the color space that the picture is in needs to be in either sRGB or Adobe RGB. So uh, if the picture you have is in, is in one of those color modes, you're good. If it's not, you need to convert it to one of them. And the way you do that is you go up here to the Edit menu, go down here to Convert to Profile, and in this dialog box you'll see the source space. This tells you what the picture is currently, and this one's in Adobe RGB already, so we don't need to change that. Now if it's in a different one other than Adobe RGB or sRGB, um, then you need to change it and then you do that where it says destination space and you click on this and you can choose you know whatever whichever one you want to use. Um, generally speaking if you have a picture that's that you don't know what the that's in a different profile other than Adobe or sRGB I would set it to Adobe RGB um, and leave it like that. If a uh, um, if it's already in sRGB, they'll leave it alone. If it's already in Adobe RGB, of course, you can leave it alone then, too. So once you set that, then you can hit click OK, and it'll convert to the, to the profile for you. Um, I'm going to hit Cancel because it's already in the correct profile, the example picture is. OK, now the next thing we need to do is um, I've got this picture resized to the final image size. This is going to be about 6 by 8 inches. and I recommend resizing your pictures in Photoshop before you print them instead of doing the resizing in the printer driver because the image quality I think will be better than the pictures tend to be sharper if they're resized in Photoshop. For one thing, after you resize a picture, you need to sharpen it in Photoshop because when you whenever you resize one like if you this this picture is going to be six by eight, but it came from a twenty megapixel camera, which gives you a file that's big enough to do like a I don't know eleven by fourteen or something around that um, at its native resolution. And so when you take a big file like that and you resize it down to a smaller size, you lose a little bit of the appearance of sharpness, and so you need to you need to sharpen the picture in Photoshop before you print it in order to get the sharpest print possible. That's already been done here, so this is ready to go. But I just wanted to mention that it's, it's you get better quality if you resize the picture in Photoshop. Um, with Epson printers, usually you'll get the best results by sizing to whatever the, the inches, width, and height that you want, and then make it 360 um, pixels per inch. Now if we go down here to print, um, this is the Photoshop print settings dialog box. Um, you'll notice that there's a preview image right here. If the picture, um, the preview image is going to use the paper size that was used the last time you used your printer. If you're making a picture that's going to be on a different paper size, this a preview may not look right. The picture may look really big or really small in that, in that piece of paper because it may be too big or too small for it. If that's the case, um, we'll be changing the paper size in the print or in the printer driver in just a minute. But I want to show a couple other things here before we get to that. The first thing you need to do is where it says uh, printer, you choose the printer you want to use. If you have more than one printer, you can choose the one you're going to use in this dialog box. And I already have it set to Epson SCP800 series because I have an Epson SureColor P800. The IP in the parentheses on this one is because my printer is connected over a network instead of being directly connected to the computer with a USB cable. Um, print settings. This is how you access the printer driver, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. Um, layout. 
If the picture is a horizontal picture, you click horizontal like we have here. If it's a vertical picture, you click the vertical one. And you can see that doesn't work with our preview image because it needs to be horizontal. Uh, color management. Um, color handling, you have two choices. Printer manages colors or Photoshop manages colors. Um, we're using printer manages colors. Photoshop manages colors as if you're going to use ICC profiles. And that's, a, that's as I said, that's covered in a different tutorial. We're not doing that here. Um, choose printer manages colors. Printer profile. This will be grayed out. You can't change that. And the reason is because profiles aren't used with the printer manages colors mode. So it doesn't matter what profile is chosen here. So they just have taken that option away from you. Um, next thing, send 16-bit data. If your file is a 16-bit file, um, check this. It's, a, it's, it's better to send the 16-bit data to the printer if you have a 16-bit file. If the file is an 8-bit file, this will be grayed out and you won't have to worry about it. This thing here too about rendering intent, um, it says perceptual here. You can ignore this too. This is actually only used when, when you're using an ICC profile. I'm not sure why Adobe doesn't have it grayed out because it really doesn't matter what this is set at. It's not going to affect your prints. So just leave it at the default, which will, will probably be perceptual. Black point compensation is grayed out because that's something that's only used with ICC profiles. So you know, once again, that's not something we need for this. Um, down below here is position and size. And you can resize the picture here, which it, just a minute ago I told you not to do. So we'll, I'll just leave this alone. We don't, we don't change the sizes here. Um, positioning on the paper, this you really shouldn't change until you make sure that the, that the uh, printer's driver is set to the paper size you're going to use. So we'll come back to this in a minute. So what we need to look at now is the printer driver, which is in the print settings here. Now this is the Epson printer driver, and this is the thing that's changed since my earlier video. The Photoshop printer setting dialog box is, is basically the same. I don't think anything has changed on that. But Apple has made changes to the operating system because the printer drivers work through the operating system. Um, you, would see, you would see this exact same printer driver box even if you weren't using Photoshop. If you were using some other um, software, it would look just like this. So what we're going to look at here, first thing is you choose the printer, which we've already done. Um, copies, you can put how many prints you want to make uh, of, the, of the picture. Okay, paper size. Here's the big one. This is important. Um, Lots of different choices, and you can choose which one you want. I'm choosing U.S. letter, which is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Um, layout and paper handling, I don't mess with any of those. For doing fine art printing, those aren't really anything we need to change. Printer options has a lot of stuff that we need to look at, though. Um, first thing we need to look at is color matching. If you click that, you have two options, color sync and Epson color controls. And this is the one you want, Epson Color Controls. Click OK. Then click Printer Settings. Um, this has got a lot of things that are important here. The first thing is paper source. Um, some printers have more than one way that you can insert paper into the printer. My Epson P800 has two. There's the regular sheet feeder that you see where you put a stack of paper into the, into the sheet feeder at the top of the printer. And then there's the front fine art slot, which is used for real thick fine art papers, ones that are too thick to go through the regular sheet feeder without jamming the printer. The paper that I'm using now is, is one of those thick papers, so we're going to choose front fine art for that. If you're using a thinner paper, then you can use the sheet feeder. And you see those are the two choices, so we're choosing front fine art. Media type. Um, you can choose um, what kind of paper you're using here. Now everything that's listed here are papers that Epson makes. There are no choices in here for non-Epson papers. If you're using an Epson paper, choose the exact paper that you're using. Whatever it is, find its name in there and choose it. You'll get that, that's um, the one you need to choose. Now, what if you're using a non-Epson paper? I'm using Ilford's um, um, gold fiber gloss paper. The different manufacturers of paper usually will give you an information sheet either in the box or maybe on their website if you don't see one in the box. They will tell you what driver settings to use for their paper. And so for this for this paper and the Epson P800, Ilford recommends using the uh, photo paper premium glossy setting, which is what we've already got chosen, premium photo paper glossy. So we'll choose that. Now if you if your paper that you bought is not an Epson paper and they don't give you directions on which driver setting to use, 
Um, you're going to have to kind of guess on that. What I would do is I would choose an Epson paper that is most similar to whatever it is that you're using and try that and see. You might have to try a couple different ones and see which ones give you the best results, but most of the good paper manufacturers um, do include an information sheet um, or have something on their website that lists what settings to use. So look those up if you're not sure what it is. Um, the next thing here is ink type. Um, this printer has two types of black ink. There's a photo black ink, which is used for like glossy and semi-gloss type papers and, and luster surface papers. And then there's a um, matte black ink, which is used for like matte papers, watercolor papers, um, um, some types of fine art papers that are like the cotton type fine art papers use that. Um, on my printer, the ink type is automatically chosen for you when you choose the paper in the media type setting. Some printers, some Epson printers will give you a choice where you have to choose one or the other, so you would want to choose whichever one's appropriate for the paper you're using. And if you're using a not if you're using a non-Epson paper, then they will usually tell you in the settings too which of those to choose. But basically if it's a glossy paper or a semi-gloss or a luster surface or pearl surface type paper, any of those use photo black. Anything that's like a matte paper or a cotton paper or a or a watercolor type paper, those you usually should use the matte black. Um, next thing here is print mode. You have two you have two choices for this printer: um, Epson Precision Dot and Advanced Black and White Photo. I have a separate I have a separate tutorial on the Advanced Black and White Photo mode, which is a really wonderful way to print black and white pictures. But we're not going to show that here now. We're going to choose the Precision Dot, which is the the mode for color printing. Um, some Epson printers, instead of saying Precision Dot, they'll just say Color. So you have a choice between Color or Advanced Black and White mode. Okay, color mode here. Remember I said that the picture needed to be either in Adobe RGB or the sRGB color space? Um, this is why it's important. You'll see that there's, a, that there's three choices here. There's either manual settings, where you can choose one of the two color spaces, or you have off, which is no color management. The off setting is used when you're using ICC profiles, so we're not going to do that here. What you're going to want to do is choose one of these. And the one you choose is going to be whichever whichever color space your file is in. If the file was in the sRGB color space, choose that. If it was in the Adobe RGB color space, like mine is, you choose that. Next thing, output resolution. Um, you have two choices for this paper. Some paper some papers won't let you do do certain ones. Like if you choose if you were using plain paper, you wouldn't be able to choose these high resolution settings. Um, but since we're using a photo paper, it won't let you choose the low resolution settings because they don't look good on that kind of paper. So you have two choices really. You got super fine 1440 DPI or super photo 2880 DPI. Um, in theory, the 2880 DPI gives better image quality. In actual practice, I've never seen a difference. Um, if you choose the, um, the 1440 DPI setting, it prints faster. So it, if time is an issue, you know, you can choose that with no guilt because I don't think that you're really losing any image quality. I've never been able to see a difference. It also uses slightly less ink too, so um, that's the setting I would recommend. Now, if you if you make prints and you see that the uh, pictures, um, if you can see the little dots that are that are produced by the inkjet printer on the paper you're using, then you might try doing the higher resolution mode, do the 2880. But most papers that I've used, every um, the Ilford paper I'm using now works beautifully with the 1440 setting. Um, I always turn off the high speed setting, um, even though it makes the printing times longer, because it just gives the paper just a slightly longer time to dry before it gets advanced to the through the rollers. Um, the finest detail though should be set that that gives you um, finer image quality. Um, mirror image you would you would want to leave that unchecked. Um, in the advanced color settings, you have things where you can change the brightness and and color of the paper. Or the picture, I would not mess with these in the printer driver. These are things that shouldn't be shouldn't be changed there. You need to change this in Photoshop by by um, color balancing the picture in Photoshop. If if the picture is too dark or the or the or too high or too low in contrast or the color's not right, so just leave this stuff alone. Um, gamma should be left at two point two. If you find you're consistently getting pictures that are too dark, you can switch to the one point eight gamma, which makes the pictures a bit lighter. But you shouldn't really need to do that if, you're, if your monitor is properly calibrated. So 2.2 is what you would most of the time use. So usually I don't even mess with these advanced color settings. I just leave, the, leave them set at their defaults. 
Um, so we're back here to the, to the uh, main settings again. We have everything set, so let's hit, hit OK. Um, the next thing that you want to look at is um, if you're doing roll paper instead of sheet fed paper, then there's things in here you want to look at. Um, we need to look at the advanced media control too. Um, now these things for drying time and paper feed adjustment and, and such, um, I never really have had to change any of this stuff. I just leave that at the defaults. Um, the plate and gap is one thing that you will want to look at though. If you're using a thick paper, you want to set that to wide. Um, the standard setting, which is for thinner papers, if you, if you use that with a thick paper, sometimes the printhead can strike the top of the paper and you don't want that to happen. So I'm setting the wide plate and gap because the Ilford paper I'm using is a pretty thick paper. So we hit OK. Um, now that's all the things we need to set here in the, in the printer driver. So we'll go ahead and hit Save. And now we're back to the Photoshop print settings again. Now, if you had set a uh, different paper size, then look at this again. Make sure that the, uh, that the image fits into the paper to confirm you've got the right paper size done. This is a 6x8 image that I'm going to print on 8.5x11 paper. And I'm doing that because I want some white border around it. If you're going to frame the picture, you need, you need some space around it to allow the, over, allow the mat to slightly overlap the uh, edges of the paper without covering any of your image area. You also need, if you're, if you're going to sign the prints or title them, you need some space for that as well. And so you don't want to make a, a print that totally fills the paper. If you need to make a, a larger print, use larger paper to make sure you still have some white border around it. Now, there's one thing down here that we mentioned earlier that we need to look at, and that's the uh, positioning thing. You see how the center box is checked and the picture is perfectly centered. Um, a lot of times that's what you'll want to use, but sometimes you don't want it centered. If you're going to sign and title the picture, you want the picture to be moved up slightly on the paper so that you have a little bit more white space at the bottom to make room for that signature and title to be written in. And so when you're going to do that, you uncheck the, uncheck the center box, and you see there's two um, places here we can, where you can enter in um, measurements in inches. The top setting is how far from the top that the image starts, and the left setting is how far from the left edge that the picture starts. I don't mess with the left setting because you usually want the picture centered left or right. So if you leave that alone, you're fine. What I want to do is I want to move the picture up slightly, though, on the vertical axis. And so I will change the setting, which for this particular image, because of the size of the picture compared to the size of the paper, is 1.104 inches down from the top. I'm going to change that to 0.7 inches down from the top. That still leaves me a nice uh, amount of space up here to allow for matting, but it gives me a lot more space at the bottom to sign and title the picture. Traditionally, photographers sign and title the pictures by putting the title under the lower left corner in the white space. You don't want to write on the image itself. It's got to be below the image. And then the, the sign your signature then would go under the lower right-hand corner, also in the white area, not on the image. Painters, painters will sign pictures on the image. Photographers do not. We sign underneath the image. Um, if you're doing a limited edition, then you would put the editioning number in the middle then, like 1 out of 100 or 4 out of 100 or whatever, whatever your editioning is, you would put that in the center. So you need that extra white space to allow for you to write in that text. So once you've got that set, confirm everything else here is still where it needs to be. Um, go ahead and hit print and you're done. Um, wait for the print to come out and see how it looks.